Welcome to Designing Games for Social Impact, leaning into 20 years of learning from Games for Change. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mary Elizabeth Pearson, and I am the Director of Curriculum and Professional Development at G4C Learn. I live in Washington State, and I can be found on X at Pearson MEP. I also can be reached at my email should you have any questions. Before Games for Change, I was an educator in the public school system for 25 years. I worked at all three levels of education system as a teacher, as an instructional coach, and a director of technology. I believe strongly in game-based learning and bring game design, bringing game design into our classroom to support our students in their future-ready skills. So join me as I discuss how we leveraged 20 years of learning um, to create our next-gen summit for students. In this showcase, I will introduce G4C and G4C Learn and what two programs have been developed to support students and educators in the design of social impact games. The bulk of our time today will be focused on how we leaned into 20 years of learning and community and then created this Next Gen Summit for students. So what do we do? Games for Change is the largest global nonprofit and community dedicated to using games and immersive media to help people learn, improve their communities, and make the world a better place. Our events and programs empower game creators and social innovators to really drive world change, world impact through digital games and immersive media. Over the last 20 years, we've supported the growth of a global games for good community and the G4C community now has chapters all over the world. We've seen a lot of evidence that shows games can make a meaningful impact on real world problems. But we've still only scratched the surface when it comes to the games, to the power of games beyond entertainment. We need more collaboration and co-creation across sectors to increase impact. At G4C, we have G4C Learn. We have two flagship programs under G4C Learn, which are called Game Plan and Student Challenge. PD, such as Game Plan, gives museum and STEM educators a deep dive into all the ways games can revolutionize a student's experience with school. Student-facing programs, such as the Student Challenge, however, provide 21st century STEAM college and career readiness, and um, which will directly challenge students to design impact games for our annual competition. First up, I will discuss game plan. We strive to create a hands-on professional development that is led by game designers and expert in game-based learning. I am currently running one of these now for our STEM educators alongside a game designer and it creates such a nice opportunity to um, access a community, create like, with like-minded um, STEM educators, and help support them as they learn to bring game design into their classroom and into their content. A few of our objectives with Game Plan is we really want our educators to explore the foundations of game design, move through those steps and the game design process just like they might do for their students, and define a cons um, and discern effective learning games. We then move briefly into connecting learning goals to game mechanics, which is, some, is something that we strive to help educators with because that's sometimes where we get stuck when we are looking at um, games in the classroom. And then we look at prototyping games, ideating games, and designing digital um, games or analog games. Our second flagship program is our Student Challenge. We invite students to create digital games about issues impacting their communities. Last year, 885 games were submitted by 1,676 students on themes relating to accessibility, sustainability, and voting rights. Students hailed from all over the country, but over 80% of our students were from Title I schools. The theme changes each year, but the mission stays the same. 
bring game design to kids to empower them as creators and change makers. We want to create a pipeline to help diversify the gaming industry. We want to connect the game industry to kids and schools. Besides our flagship programs, our community consists of many partners and collaborators who are dedicated to using games and immersive media to help people learn, improve their communities, and make the world a better place. Leaning into our community meant leveraging these groups to support future generations of gamers and industry thought leaders. Enter in the idea of the Next Gen Summit. Today, I want to talk to you about Games for Change's Next Gen Summit. The summit was an exciting and transformative event for all involved. The summit is not just any ordinary gathering. It is a powerful platform designed to educate, inspire, and empower middle and high school students. The goal? To turn them into responsible gamers, creators of impact games and XR experiences, and agents of change for, um, in their communities. At the vision stage, we wanted to give students an event that mirrored what we do at the festival, but connect it to future generations of game designers, coders, creators, and innovators. One of the important decisions that we had to make at first was where we would host our Next Gen Summit. We had done an event here at the Microsoft Experience Center in February for students and it worked really well. It was a nice, large, bright space. So we decided that we would do this at the Microsoft Experience Center on the Friday after our festival. You can see that the Microsoft Experience Center has lots of floors, students could move back and forth and we would have the ability to use the stairs and the elevators. Next came the overview of the event. We decided that there would be three types of activities running at the same time, the industry meet and greet, workshops, and an esports learning opportunity. As anyone knows, when planning an event, the schedule is really important. This elaborate slide, which I will show you, is just to show you the different kinds of planning for the four blocks of time. In the beginning, we wanted to have the sessions, we wanted to have um, an industry meet and greet and a panel running all at the same time. And we put students in different color groups so that they would move as a group through all of these sessions. Then we had lunch, and then we went back into the same block of time after lunch, again, a session three, and then we had our esports tournament. So you can see our thoughts and ideas of we want really needed a visual in how to plan this out. Before we began the sessions, we wanted an opportunity for students to arrive and get settled. They needed to get checked in and get their badges. And we were lucky enough to be in the Microsoft Experience Center. So there we had them in the space where the McLaren was. Unfortunately, the McLaren was not working that day, but students could look at it, they could sit in it, they just wouldn't do the driving and the moving um, and the, where the screens are there. So it kind of didn't work out the way we wanted it to, but it was an opportunity to bring all the students into one space, get them all checked in, and then give them their badges, and then be able to split them out into the groups that they were going to be in while giving them something to look at while they waited. After we did that, we started block one. Block one was workshops, esports, and a panel. One of the unique aspects of the summit was the ability to connect young participants with professionals working in the gaming industry. These industry experts could serve as role models, sharing their experiences and insights, and potentially opening doors to career paths in technology and social innovation for students. Students moved in groups, during the blocks of time, students moved through a panel of industry experts, esports, and then had five choices of workshops. Game design with Minecraft, playing in the streets, real world game design, game design in Unity, game on, storytelling in game and film, and everything in moderation, building digital communities. We really tried to give them a well-rounded brief look at the different opportunities with inside the gaming industry. And as with any good event, you want to feed your participants. So of course we had lunch. 
At lunch, we fed the students um, pizza, and Hasbro, one of our partners, allowed us to borrow a ton of tabletop games. And so we put out these tabletop games, and all of the students played uh, tabletop games and ate their pizza. After lunch, we continued on with blocks two and three. By immersing themselves in digital design and coding workshops, the students gained valuable skills that are in high demand in today's job market. After block three and before our eSports tournament, we had dinner. By this time, the students were more comfortable with one another, so they ate and played more games together. We wanted to make sure we included a picture of our Mediterranean meals because we did not just feed them pizza again. And as we've learned, and as I've said before, feeding participants is always a really important part of connecting and creating a community. Our next block of time was our eSports tournament. This was a little bit more of a casual environment. And you can see from the picture that the gaming consoles are facing each other and the back screen was able to show all the different screens of the students playing. Because the summit placed a strong emphasis on collaboration and community building, we really wanted to continue that. So we continued that emphasis by ending our day with an esports tournament. Students qualified for the tournament during the esports workshop. We had 45 students that qualified, and students who did not qualify could leave or they could stay. We're happy to report that 75% of the students stayed to be part of the, tur the tournament. And you'll notice in these pictures, if they weren't part of the tournament, you can see in the top right picture, the students sitting down in the back, they were continuing to play board games. At this table, Battleship was a very big crowd pleaser. You can see on the left hand side of the picture is just really what was happening. Students were milling around, they were supporting each other, students were playing against each other and very focused, but they were all, there was this community and collaboration happening. The bottom right two pictures, you'll notice that those are our winners and our partners, um, because we leveraged our partners, they gave us prizes to give out to the winning teams. Leveraging our community, meant finding and working with some of our partners. The eSports partners were Vanta and Rocket League, and they were amazing. It's really neat to see partners come together to support students. For our meet and greet and sessions, we leverage these partnerships, Gaming Pathways, Coexist, Hasbro, Vanta, OpenAI, and Unity in Education. It was really important to also bring Sugar Gamers on board who helped us curate panelists that look like the students and that the students could connect with. We learned some valuable lessons to be able to create a STEM career pipeline for students. And we wanted the youth to encounter all of these, um, all of these, this learning from mentors in the field. But we also wanted to learn from them how this might be youth directed and connect back. One of the things that we learned was that there needed to be a larger space, almost like a uh, conference level, so that everyone was on the same floor and they moved around and could mingle with each other in different groups. We also learned that sharing meals led to playing games, which together helped to build a community. The other thing that we learned from our students, which was amazing, was that they really wanted more content options, storytelling, art, and music of gaming. I think that is really powerful because not all students are video game players, but they definitely are interested in creating for games. So what was our outcome? The Next Gen Summit can support the STEM career pipeline. We wanted our youth to encounter and learn from mentors in the field who look like them and who understand their experiences and challenges. Our summit was in person and youth directed, and we wanted them to connect with gaming and in game industry professionals from their community. Teens could practice skills and mindsets required for future careers in the lucrative video game industry and related fields, as well as expose them to how to transform those spaces um, into more inclusive and accessible spaces. We served 80 underrepresented New York City teens, and it helped us understand how this programming can support youth college and career ambitions. 
and how to create a model that can be brought to and adapted for local communities across the U.S. in ways that are low cost, meaningful, and that can meet the unique, unique needs of many different underserved youth communities. Our biggest outcome um, that we were most proud of is that 100% of our students said they would bring, they would recommend this to a friend. In conclusion, the Next Gen Summit was an incredible opportunity for middle school and high school students to embark on a transformative journey. We hoped it empowered them to become responsible gamers, creators of impact games and XR experiences, as well as agents of change in their communities. By connecting them with industry professionals, we hoped that they learned valuable tech skills and fostered collaboration. And we hope that this event equipped them with the tools that they would need to shape their own future. Thank you for joining me as I shared how we leveraged our 20 years of learning and partnerships and created the Next Gen Summit for students. We hope that this also has sparked ideas for you to bring events like this into your communities and to the students that you serve. Thank you so much.